At the beginning, I will tell you something about the energy importance of triacylglycerols. Yes, how many energy we can store in triacylglycerols, why they are the best, why how to store energy. And then the majority about beta oxidation and ketone bodies. So, what type of storage compounds do you think we have in our body? We have triacylglycerols that are this. What other storage compounds we have? Glycogen. Do we have some other? Ketone body is not a storage compound. It's produced during fasting to gain energy, but it's not a storage compound. Only these two we have. Only triacylglycerols and glycogen, only these two compounds are storage compounds, yes? There is no protein that can be used to gain energy without any harm effect, yes? For if you degradate some protein in the body, it will impair some function, yes? Of course, during fasting, you can degradate muscle proteins, but you will be weaker than normal, yes? During fasting, you can degradate some proteins in plasma, but you will have impaired transport of some compounds in plasma, yes? Therefore, we have only two storage compounds and none of them is protein, yes? Triacylglycerol are the main storage compound uh, in the human body. Why they are so good? For in their molecule, triacylglycerol consists of three fatty acids, one glycerol, and the fatty acids, that's only carbon and hydrogen. So they are reduced, and the more reduced the compound is, the more energy you can gain from it. If you compare, for example, the glucose and palmitate, in glucose, you have how many uh, oxygen atoms? Six. And you have there are six carbon atoms and 12 hydrogen atoms. In palmitate, you have 16 carbon atoms, 31 hydrogen atoms, and only two oxygen atoms, yes? So in palmitate and other fatty acids, you have a lot of carbon, a lot of hydrogen, so you can gain a lot of electrons that you can use in electron transport chain, yes? In one gram of fat has six times more energy than one gram of glycogen, yes? So six times more energy if you have the same weight. And by com one complete oxidation of one gram of fatty acid, you gain about 38 kilojoules. The same amount of saccharides of proteins give you only 17 kilojoules, yes? So triacylglycerols are the best way how to store energy. Here you have the list. If you are men, you have 70 kilograms. You have sold high energy amount in triacylglycerols, yes? And in proteins, you have only 10,000 kilojoules, yes? So you see 40 times more in triacylglycerols. In glycogen, you have only 2,500 kilojoules. And in blood glucose, you have only 170 kilojoules, yes? So we can survive starvation only due to triacylglycerols. The main site of accumulation triacylglycerols is the cytoplasm of adipocytes. Adipocytes are the cell in adipose tissue, yes? When we want to use the energy from the triacylglycerols, we need to do three steps. The first step is the mobilization of lipids. It means you have triacylglycerols in the adipose tissue and the adipocyte, and you need to degrade the triacylglycerol to glycerol and three molecules of fatty acids. This process is called mobilization of fatty acids or mobilization of lipids. The second process is you need to absorb the fatty acid to the cell. Then you need to activate the fatty acid in the cytoplasm. And you need to transport the fatty acid from the cytoplasm to the matrix of mitochondria. 
And then the last process is the beta oxidation itself. That's the place where you generate the reduced cofactors, where you generate acetylcoenzyme A. Yes? So these three processes, and we will go through them. So the first process is the process of mobilization of lipids. It means the mobilization of fatty acids in the adipose tissue. Enzyme that does this mobilization is called lipase for it degradate lipids. And it's the hormone sensitive lipase. It means this lipase is regulated by hormones. It do the complete lipolysis. It means that from one molecule of triacylglycerols, of triacylglycerol, you gain three molecules of free fatty acids and one molecule of glycerol, yes? There are some lipases in our body that, for example, chop only two fatty acids and the rest is the monoacylglycerol. The hormone-sensitive lipase does complete lipolysis. Then the fatty acids go from the adipocyte and they are bound to albumin. Albumin is the plasma protein that can carry many compounds. It can carry bilirubin, it can carry fatty acids, many drugs it can also carry, yes? How is this enzyme regulated? Hormone-sensitive lipase catalyzes anabolic or catabolic reaction. It's catabolic reaction. So it has to be activated by catabolic hormones and inhibited by anabolic hormones. Insulin, that's anabolic hormone, and therefore hormone-sensitive lipase is inhibited by insulin. And the counter-regulatory hormones as glucagon, epinephrine, or cortisol, they activate hormone-sensitive lipase. I will remind you what we will do with the glycerol, yes? Hormone-sensitive lipase releases three molecules of fatty acids and one molecule of glycerol, yes? Last lecture, we spoke about the metabolism of glycerol, how it can feed the gluconeogenesis. So the glycerol is converted to glycerol 3-phosphate in a reaction catalyzed by glycerol kinase. And then the second reaction, we convert glycerol 3-phosphate to dehydroxyacetone phosphate. This is oxidation. This hydroxy group is converted to keto group, so it's catalyzed by dehydrogenase, yes? So in these two steps, you use glycogen, sorry, glycerol, and you feed with it gluconeogenesis, yes? Do you remember it, all of you? So now back to fatty acids. The first process is done, that's the mobilization. The second process is we need to gain the fatty acids to the cell. You know, last lecture we spoke about glucose. The process is how glucose enters the cell are well described. Yes, we know precisely the GLUT transporters, the sodium glucose transporter. The transport processes of fatty acids is not so well described, yes? We aren't absolutely sure what's the most important process. What do we know? What means this abbreviation? Short chain fatty acids. So those that have lower uh, carbon count at 12, they can do, they can go by simple diffusion through the membrane. If they are longer than 12 carbon atoms, there are different transport systems in the membrane, yes? Here are two examples. The first is fatty acid transport protein. The second is fatty acid translocase. You do not have to remember them. Only know that fatty acids that have longer chain than 12 need to have some transporter, yes? Those transporters do the facilitated diffusion, yes? Then there are some other proteins that are secondary active. Yes? So now we have fatty acid in the cytosol. 
When glucose entered the cytosol, it was activated by glucokinase or by hexokinase. The same process is here. When fatty acid enters cytosol, it has to be activated. But here, it's not activation by phosphate. Here, it's activation by coenzyme A. You produce here the ester bond between fatty acid and coenzyme A. For the reaction, you need ATP. Sorry, here should be fatty acids. That's in check. Uh, so here it's fatty acid. Here is ATP. If you need ATP for the reaction, for a synthetic reaction, so what group of enzymes you will use? Six group. It means ligases or synthetases. Yes? Therefore, the enzyme is called synthetase, and it produces acyl coenzyme A, and it's called acyl coenzyme A synthetase. So this is the enzyme for the activation of fatty acids. Yes? So the same role as glucokinase or hexokinase. But here you need two macroergic bonds, yes? So for one activation, two ATPs you have to use, or one ATP, but you destroy both macroergic bonds. Uh, that's the fatty acids, it's from Czech. So I will correct it when I, before I put it on the web, yes? MK means mustnek, isiline, that's the same as fatty acids. And now, we have prepared fatty acid and we want to gain energy from it. In general, we have two processes. One process with a major role is beta oxidation in the mitochondrial matrix. The other possibility is to do the reaction somewhere else. Those processes you do not have to learn. That's, for example, omega oxidation or alpha oxidation, or it's also oxidation for a very long chain fatty acids, those that have more than 20 carbon atoms, yes? So in the books, you will read it. You can read in Harper, for example, the omega oxidation, alpha oxidation on endoplasmic membranes, then the oxidation of very long chain fatty acids on, in peroxisomes, but you do not have to remember it, yes? Only know that the other pathways exist, yes? Normally, less than 1% undergoes this, yes? Under pathologic conditions, for example, if you have problem with beta oxidation, the ratio grows, yes? So these reactions are normally important only for when you have some disease. Or for some tissues, they are also important for especially in our brain, we have a lot of lo very long chain fatty acids, yes? So if you would like to do the science in brain metabolism, then you will have to learn these pathways. For the normal energy metabolism, it doesn't matter. Why we have here these different Greek letters? Beta, alpha, omega. It says in which carbon fatty acid it will. Yes. And can you convert these letters to systematic numbers? Alpha means what? Alpha means two, beta means three, and omega, last carbon, yes? So, from now, I will tell you what's the fate of fatty acid if it wants to undergo beta oxidation, yes? The major, the major role. Beta oxidation takes place in matrix of mitochondria. And the acyl coenzyme A, can go through the outer mitochondrial membrane, but it cannot go through the inner one, yes? And therefore, there has to be some transport process how to transport the acyl coenzyme A through the inner mitochondrial membrane. To do this, we have the carnitine shuttle, yes? It consists of three enzymes, 
And the principle is that carnitine is a small molecule. It has only seven carbon atoms. Coenzyme A is a very big molecule. Yes. And the carnitine can be easily transported through the inner mitochondrial membrane. The enzymes that transfer fatty acid between coenzyme A and carnitine are called carnitine acyl transferases. In some books you can read carnitine palmitoyl transferases, yes? Then the abbreviation is not CAT but CPT, yes? I think that in Harper they use only the carnitine palmitoyl transferase, yes? But the better way is to call it carnitine acyl transferase for with carnitine shuttle you can transport all fatty acids, not only palmitoyl. Here in the carnitine you have the hydroxy group and with this hydroxy group can the fatty acid react to do <coughs> what type of bond? When you have fatty acid and hydroxy group? Ester bond. Ester bond, yes? The first enzyme is called acyl carnitine, uh, sorry, it's called carnitine acyl transferase. Number one, yes? No, it's absolutely the same thing. The same. the same thing, you know. The old, it was discovered that it transports palmitate. Therefore, the older name is carnitine palmitoyl transferase. But now we know that it can transport all, all fatty acids. Therefore, the new name is carnitine acyl transferase. But you know, the old habits are still very deep. So, I think that in this picture, you have carnitine palmitoyl transferase. Yes? And it's the same thing as carnitine acyl transferase, absolutely. So the first, carnitine acyl transferase number one. So you have fatty acid in the cytosol, it's activated, so it's acyl coenzyme A. Here we have acyl coenzyme A. Carnitine acyl transferase takes carnitine and acyl coenzyme A and do the exchange. So it produces coenzyme A and acyl carnitine. Yes? Here is the ester bound. This enzyme is localized at the cytosolic side of the outer mitochondrial membrane. Yes? Then you have the second enzyme that's the transport protein, yes? This transport protein translocase is localized in the inner mitochondrial membrane and the principle is that it takes the acylcarnitine from the inner membrane space, then carnitine from the matrix and there's exchange, yes? So one acyl carnitine in matrix, one pure carnitine between two membranes of mitochondria. Yes? So now you have what you want, acyl carnitine in the matrix. And to produce acyl coenzyme A, you have the third enzyme, carnitine acyl transferase number two. This enzyme is localized in mitochondrial matrix and it does the reverse transport. It takes acyl from carnitine back to the coenzyme A. The free carnitine then leaves the matrix to close the cycle, yes, to close the shuttle. And when the acyl coenzyme A enters mitochondrial matrix, there is only one fate for it, the beta oxidation, yes? So here we have the scheme here we have the activation of fatty acids. First enzyme of the shuttle, carnitine acyl transferase one. It produces acyl carnitine. Then you have translocase that exchange acyl carnitine to carnitine. And then the carnitine acyl transferase number two that produces the acyl coenzyme A, yes? So if in the books you have carnitine shuttle, 
these three enzymes and one carnitine. Beta oxidation. Beta oxidation is very simple process for it's the same process and the, as the Krebs cycle. Yes? So if you know reactions of Krebs cycle, you know also the reactions of beta oxidation. In Krebs cycle, what we will take from the Krebs cycle is the cycle from succinate. For at the beginning, you have linear fatty acid with no double bond, and succinate is the same thing. What do you do with succinate in the Krebs cycle? Fumarate. By what enzyme? Succinate dehydrogenase, the cofactor is FAD. Here you have acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase, and prosthetic group is FAD. You have fumarate in Krebs cycle, double bound. What's the reaction that you do? Addition of water. Here, second enzyme hydratase catalyzes addition of water. What's the product of uh, the hydratation of fumarate? Malate. What do you do with malate? Oxidation, malate dehydrogenase. From malate, you produce oxaloacetate. Coenzyme is NAD. This is hydroxy, the same as malate has hydroxy group. You do D. Dehydrogenation, coenzyme is NAD, and you produce keto group. And the only different thing is that when you produce oxaloacetate in the Krebs cycle, you let it react with new acetyl coenzyme A. Here, you chop two carbon atoms away by the beta keto phyllase, and you produce one molecule of acetyl coenzyme A. So in beta oxidation, you have only one new reaction. Yes? The other one you know. So the first enzyme is acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase. It catalyzes the production of double bond between alpha and beta carbon. It means between second and third carbon. The factor is FAD. And what is for us important, that in the matrix we have at least three different dehydrogenases. And they catalyze reaction depending on the number of carbon atoms. So we have acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase for long chain fatty acids, for medium chain fatty acids, and for short chain fatty acids. So if you give to mitochondria, for example, palmitate with 16 carbon atoms, then you will use long chain fatty acid dehydrogenase. When you go to only 10 carbon atoms during the degradation, the second enzyme will take it. When you degradate other, two, uh, other four carbon atoms, you use the third enzyme. So to degradate palmitate, you need all these three enzymes, yes? For example, if you give to mitochondria fatty acid with 10 carbon atoms, you will start with medium chain fatty acid dehydrogenase, and then you will go to short chain fatty acid dehydrogenase, yes? Why is this important? For you have metabolic defects, yes, impairment of beta oxidation, and the majority of these defects are localized here in acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenases. And you can have defect here, here, or here, yes? And it's important for the prognosis. For you have to change the diet of the patient. And for example, when the patient has problem with this dehydrogenase, you will feed him with medium chain triglycerides. With, fat, uh, with triglycerides that have this number of carbon atoms, the fatty acids inside, yes? So therefore you should know it, yes? When the, long, uh, when the enzyme for the long chain is not functioning. Yes, okay. if you have problem with this enzyme, yeah. Then you will give the diet with the medium chain triglycerides. Okay. It means to feed this. Of course, then there is 
the problem that the patient has the accumulation of these fatty acids, yes? For the, it's a very big problem for the, for the majority of fatty acids in our body has 16, 18 carbon atoms, yes? But therefore we have the minor pathways, the alpha oxidation, omega oxidation, that they can help us. So that's the first enzyme. Second enzyme, you have double bond, you take water, and you produce on beta carbon hydroxy group. Hydroxy group can be oxidized to keto group by the hydrogenase. Here the cofactor is NAD. And then the new reaction is if you have fatty acid with two keto, then you want to remove these two carbon atoms and to produce acetylcoenzyme A. Yes, that's the end product of beta oxidation, acetylcoenzyme A. So the last enzyme is beta ketotylase. The sulfur, it uses the sulfur in the coenzyme A to attack this beta carbon and here to destroy this bond, yes? So it's the incorporation of new molecule of coenzyme A and you produce acetylcoenzyme A and acetylcoenzyme A that is shorter, yes? So when at the beginning was 16, now we have 14. After the other rotation, you have 12, then you have 10, then you have eight, yes? The only thing what you change is the first enzyme, the dehydrogenases, yes? The other three enzymes are used still the same. So that's the beta oxidation. So you can say that in one rotation of beta oxidation, you have one alcohol dehydrogenase, the second is aldehyde dehydrogenase. Yes? So you can you look at it at books, but it's not in the test. Yes, only the names that these pathways exist. Yes? For example, the, this omega oxidation is very similar to, way, to the process how our body gets rid of xenobiotics, foreign compounds. Yes? The foreign compounds very often also react with oxygen radicals that are produced by reacting oxygen and electrons from an ADPH, yes? So our body, this reaction is the same as the detoxification of xenobiotics, yes? For the detoxification, you have special lecture in the third course, yes? So in this course, you do not have to know it. Do you have questions? No questions? So beta oxidation, you understand, yes? It's the Krebs cycle. I really do not know why, so it's the, it's the, the reaction proceed so. Yes, for if you, the omega oxidation means that from monocarboxylic acid you produce dicarboxylic acids. And somewhere you destroy the chain, so from, for example, 20 carbon atoms you produce 6, 6, 4, 4. And to all of them you will convert to dicarboxylic acid. Succinate is dicarboxylic acid with four carbon atoms. Adipic acid is dicarboxylic acid with six, uh, with six carbon atoms. But why this? We really do not know. Yes? And in these pathways, very often, there is not only one product, yes? For it depends where you break the chain, yes? So you also can produce, for example, malonic acid, yes? Or glutaric acid. For these oxygen radicals are very dangerous compounds yet that can absolutely destroy the molecule where they want. So, no questions? So then you have break till 20. So now we will be speaking about ketone bodies. Yes, how to produce ketone bodies, how to degrade them. The first question is, what does it mean ketone body? What compounds are ketone bodies? Obviously. 
So there are three ketone, body, ketone bodies in our body. And they are called acetoacetate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, and acetone. Do you know their formulas? Mm -hmm. So, how looks like acetone? And then to give there the hydrogen atoms. So there's the easiest, uh, unfortunately, is the waste compound. So we need especially these first two. So how looks like acetoacetate? How many carbon atoms has acetoacetate? Four. So here we have carboxy group. Yes. So this is acetoacetic acid. Without the hydrogen is acetoacetate. Yes? So you put two acetyls together. Yes? And beta hydroxybutyrate or three hydroxybutyrate Mm -hmm. There's some hydroxy group with that. Mm -hmm. So here is hydroxy group. So that oh, oh. Thank you. So this is beta hydroxybutyrate. So the difference between beta hydroxy and butyrate and acetoacetate is simple. Oxidation or reduction. Difference between acetoacetate and acetone is also simple. You remove this. It's decarboxylation. But these uh, compounds, you can say that they are water-soluble fatty acids. Yes? They are produced from fatty acids, and they are produced only in liver, in liver mitochondria. And why? For during starvation, in liver you have a lot of energy, a lot, uh, lot of fatty acids that are degraded in beta oxidation. So you will produce ketone bodies to feed the rest of the body, yes? For the beta oxidation, you saw that it's, at the beginning, it consumes two ATPs, yes? And the only organ that has enough ATP during starvation, it's liver. So they can do the activation of fatty acids, they can do the beta oxidation, and they will take these fatty acids, degradate to acetyl coenzyme A, and then they will convert the acetyl coenzyme A to ketone bodies. And these ketone bodies then can be used by the rest of the body, yes? So you can say that they are pre-degradated fatty acids, yes? Why is one of them waste then? What? Uh, acetone cannot be used in the body, yes? So it's waste product. It belongs to ketone bodies, but only these two can be metabolized in the cells. Acetone cannot be, yes? So. In what situation you will produce ketone bodies? You produce it in liver, you produce it there during starvation. For the beta oxidation is process that's localized in matrix of mitochondria. If you have very intense beta oxidation, you produce a lot of acetyl coenzyme A, lot of reduced cofactors. And if you produce lot of reduced cofactors, you will feed the respiratory chain and you reach the maximal possible oxidation and respiratory chain. If you continue it in the beta oxidation, you cannot produce more energy. Yes? So then the liver decides to produce some energy source for the other tissues. 
and that are ketone bodies. So to produce ketone bodies, you need in the liver to have a lot of energy and a lot of acetyl coenzyme A that cannot be used in Krebs cycle, yes? For the respiratory chain is feeded by beta oxidation by the reduced cofactors for, uh, from beta oxidation, yes? And other thing, why during starvation, for to have the respirator, to have the Krebs cycle, you need the enzymes, but you also need to have the other substrate. That's oxaloacetate. And during starvation, oxaloacetate is used to produce glucose. Yes? So the situation in liver mitochondria during starvation is that. The main energy source are fatty acids that are degraded in beta oxidation. They produce a lot of acetyl coenzyme A, a lot of reduced cofactors. Therefore, the mitochondria can produce a lot of energy from these reduced cofactors. And oxaloacetate is taken to gluconeogenesis, yes, to produce glucose for the body. So in this situation, you have there are plenty of acetyl coenzyme A that cannot be used in the Krebs cycle. So what to do with it? You will convert it to ketone bodies. Yes. So that's the situation when you produce ketone bodies. You are missing oxaloacetate. You have a lot of energy and a lot of acetyl coenzyme A. So the complete process is you need the mobilization. Yes. So you need to mobilize fatty acids by hormone sensitive lipase. You need to do the beta oxidation in a liver mitochondria. And you need to have the excess of acetyl coenzyme A. Then you start ketogenesis. All these compounds are produced only from acetyl coenzyme A. Yes? You incorporate in the molecule only acetyl coenzyme A. Yes? And for acetyl coenzyme A is macroenergy compound, you have also energy for these reactions. There are three reactions of ketone bodies generation. The first is the condensation of two acetyl coenzyme A's. Yes? So you take two and put them together and you produce acetoacetyl coenzyme A. Yes? That was this compound only here would be the coenzyme A. Now it would be simply to take the coenzyme A from the molecule and to have acetate. Unfortunately, it's not so simple. And in the second step, you add one more acetyl coenzyme A to the molecule. And you gain the unique intermediate that's called 3-hydroxy, 3-methyl, glutaryl coenzyme A, abbreviations HMG coenzyme A. This molecule has six carbon atoms, yes? Two plus two plus two, together six carbon atoms. And then in the third reaction, you cleave this molecule, you release the acetyl coenzyme A, and you produce acetoacetate. Now on the pictures, so the first reaction, reaction of two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A's, and you form acetoacetyl coenzyme A. It's catalyzed by beta ketophilase, and you remember that this is the last enzyme in beta oxidation, yes? In production of ketone bodies, you do the reverse reaction, yes? From two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A, you produce one four carbon atom molecule. Yes? So it's the opposite reaction. The second reaction is condensation with the third acetyl coenzyme A molecule. And you produce the hydroxymethyl glutaryl coenzyme A. Yes? So glutaryl. It means five carbon atoms and dicarboxylic acid. So one carboxy group, second carboxy group, one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms. And on third carbon atom, you have hydroxy group and methyl group. Yes? And also you release uh, coenzyme A. 
And now in the third reaction, you only remove this from the molecule, yes? This red is removed, so it means you remove this acetyl coenzyme A, and the rest of the molecule is acetoacetate. Yes, so for production of one acetoacetate, you need three molecules of acetyl coenzyme A, yes? But only two of these molecules are used for the synthesis of them, yes? The one is only added and then removed. But we have not only acetoacetate, we have also beta-hydroxybutyrate and we have acetone. It's quite easy for acetoacetate. If you do this decarboxylation, you produce acetone. There is no enzyme to do this reaction, yes. This reaction you don't want to proceed, but it's a spontaneous reaction, yes. So some amount of acetoacetate will convert to acetone, yes? So simple decarboxylation, acetone is waste product. You can do nothing with it, yes? It's water soluble, so it will be in your plasma, in your urine, yes? You can measure acetone there. And here the reaction between these two, ketone bodies between acetoacetate and beta-hydroxybutyrate. It's simple. Here you have keto group. Here you have hydroxy group. So acetoacetate is reduced by NADH to beta-hydroxybutyrate and the opposite reaction is oxidation. It's catalyzed by beta-hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase. Yes? During the starvation, what compound you think is the most prevalent ketone body in the plasma and in general in the whole body? It means what's the proper end product of ketone body's production? This, this, or this? What's the most prevalent? If you will measure concentration of these three compounds, the highest concentration will have. So who is for acetone? Who is for acetoacetate? And who is for beta-hydroxybutyrate? Mm -hmm. And who said nothing? <laughs> so, one of you who said acetoacetate, why? That's true. <laughs> but it goes spontaneously to acetone. That's why I thought acetone. Yes, but it's, if there is no catalysis by some enzyme, it's quite slow reaction. It's oh. spontaneous, but slow reaction. Okay. Why beta-hydroxybutyrate? <laughs> of course, our body is lazy, that's true. So why to have one more reaction if it's not necessary? So why beta-hydroxybutyrate? Some idea. Why? Maybe the hydroxybutyrate can be oxidized to produce energy more. Mm -hmm. So it would be more abundant or something? Yes. This is one reason why beta hydroxybutyrate is the end product. For in this molecule, you have one more NAD. So the peripheral tissues can gain more energy from beta hydroxybutyrate than from acetoacetate. And the second reason is, what's the situation in mitochondria, in liver mitochondria, when it produces ketone bodies? What's the situation? It has plenty of reduced cofactors, yes? So it has plenty of NADH. And therefore, if you have plenty of this, then you will push the reaction in this direction, yes? So the end product is beta-hydroxybutyrate. It has the highest concentration in blood. 
first reason for this accumulation of this will push the reaction in this direction. And the second, for here, you have more energy for the peripheral tissues than here. Yes? So the end product is beta hydroxybutyrate. If you have after meal, the concentration of beta hydroxybutyrate is about 0 0.05. After a few hours of starvation, you have around 0 0.5. And the maximal value can be 10 to 20 millimoles, everything in millimoles. Yes? So you can have more ketone bodies in your blood than you have normally glucose during long starvation. Yes? What do you think is the side effect if you have a lot of beta hydroxybutyrate in blood when the concentration is about 10? When we use it, we get acetone, acetate, and also then acetone. Maybe we get acetone. You became acidic. And why? Acetone is not acid. So why you became acidic when you have so high concentration of beta hydroxybutyrate? I think that you said it, but only in... Do we produce butyrate? At the beginning we produce butyric acid. Yes, beta hydroxybutyric acid. This acid dissociates to butyrate, yes? And if you look, at the beginning was fatty acid, long chain, and only one carboxy group. Yes? And from this, for example, with 18 carbon atoms, or it's better with 60. From this, with one carboxy group, you produce four carboxy groups. For from 16 carbon atoms, you can produce four beta hydroxybutyrates. Yes? So this is the example of proton productive reaction. Yes? Production of ketone bodies is proton productive reaction from, from fatty acids you produce four acids. Yes, it means four hydrogen protons. Yes, so the side effect during starvation is that you have acidosis. It means lower pH than normal. Yes, due to these two acids and especially due to this. How we will use the ketone bodies? Ketone bodies can be degraded in the whole body, but not in liver and also not in erythrocytes and other cells that do not have mitochondria. Yes? So in all extrahepatic tissues, they can be used, but only in mitochondria. What's the principle of activation? So how we can use the ketone bodies is simple. The first, you need to convert acetoacetate to acetoacetylcoenzyme A. So the first possibility how to do it, do this is to take coenzyme A plus acetoacetate and you do the activation. But why you do not do this? Why there is other way how to use it? Why for the activation we do not use the normal activation of fatty acid? The activation normally needs two ATPs, yes? And you do the beta oxidation in liver and the production of ketone bodies, for in liver you have a lot of energy, yes? And therefore, ketone bodies aren't activated by a reaction that is coupled with consumption of ATP. So there has to be other way how to do this. And the way here is that the source of coenzyme A is succinyl coenzyme A. Succinyl coenzyme A is intermediate of Krebs cycle. Therefore, the activation is in mitochondria, yes? And in this reaction, you let react acetoacetate plus succinyl coenzyme A, and you produce acetoacetyl coenzyme A and succinate. Normally in Krebs cycle, how you change succinyl coenzyme A to succinate? Mm. 
Yes, so you chop the coenzyme A, and what you will gain? One GTP. So if you do this, you lose one GTP. Yes? But with the normal activation, it means fatty acid plus coenzyme A plus two ATPs. So therefore we do this, for here we need only one macroergic bond. Yes? So that's the way why we do this bypass in the Krebs cycle. We take the acetyl coenzyme, uh, the, we take the coenzyme A from succinyl coenzyme A and we put it to ketone body. And then the last reaction is simple. Acetoacetyl coenzyme A in mitochondria undergoes the last reaction of beta oxidation catalyzed by beta ketothiophilase. Yes? So only this reaction is unique. And this transferase is not in the liver. Yes? Therefore, our hepatocytes cannot use ketone bodies for they are missing this enzyme for activation. They can produce ketone bodies, but they cannot use them. How important is acetoacetate and other ketone bodies for our body? Yes? So during starvation, we have very, very high concentration of ketone bodies, and they became the main energy source for the body. Yes? But even under normal condition, some cells likes to use ketone bodies. Our cardiac muscle and kidney prefer normally acetoacetate to use it, yes? Also our brain, you know that our brain every day consumes about 220 grams of glucose. During long starvation, 50% of this energy expenditure can be covered by ketone bodies. And acetoacetate has one other role. If you have a lot of ketone bodies, you reach some maximal concentration, that's about 20 is the maximal concentration, then it's wasting of energy to produce more ketone bodies. And this high concentration of acetoacetate, it means this is the signal that you have a lot of free acetyl coenzyme A in the, in the liver mitochondria. This will block the mobilization of lipids. This will block the hormone-sensitive lipase, yes? So the acetoacetate is inhibitor of hormone-sensitive lipase, yes? So the hormone-sensitive lipase is not only regulated by hormones, but also by acetoacetate. And the regulation of ketone bodies, in the books you can read three steps, but only the last one is the pure regulation. The first is you need to have fatty acids. Yes? So hormone-sensitive lipase regulates the ketone body's production. That's true. You need to have the beta oxidation. Regulation of beta oxidation, that's the carnitine acyl transferase one. Then you need to have proper conditions in mitochondria. So you need to have a lot of energy, a lot of acetyl coenzyme A, and you have to have uh, oh, it's called. And you have to miss uh, oxaloacetate. So in these conditions, you can produce uh, ketone bodies. And then you have one regulatory enzymes in ketone bodies production. It's the second enzyme. is the enzyme that combines acetoacetyl coenzyme A plus acetyl coenzyme A. Yes? It's called HMG coenzyme A synthase, yes? This enzyme is regulated by some hormones, yes? Insulin block it, glucagon activates it. It's activated by a uh, high fat diet also through some nuclear receptors it's activated. And then there is one specific way how to activate it. It's activated by succinylation. If you add succinate on this molecule, it's activated. 
Yes, so it's similar to phosphorylation, but here not phosphorylation, here addition of succinate. Yes, so we, here we have three regulatory mechanisms. The pure one in this is this. These three only give the substrates to the production of ketone bodies, yes? In, key, in beta oxidation, you have no regulatory enzyme. Here you have this one. That's everything.